Uh, well, I learned about Paul D. And um, who else was there? Um, you know, also I was learning about other people. And, you know, I found that there's just so much hate, you know, for the gospel online. You know, I was introduced to anti-Mormonism for the very first time. Um, everybody called me that crazy you know, Mormon. I'm planning on getting married in about a year. So... Cool. And I heard you got a squeeze already. That's a girl. I just, I just downloaded, a, uh, put a couple of the, uh, I put the, uh, I put ours on the uh, one we did with Paul. We did that, put that on Paul and AJ's ex Mormon files, and uh, and then the other one was uh, me and my two boys. We got into debunking uh, atheism, and uh, that's on a. Latter Day Saint on Fire uh, YouTube channel. So, and this will go on my Latter Day uh, Latter Day Saints on Fire uh, YouTube channel. So, I'm AJ Hill. This is the Wyoming apologist, and I asked him to come on because I wanted to hear a story. And uh, uh, so, Alex, get started. Tell us awesome. about tell you your, your name and uh and uh and tell you tell us the full story don't leave nothing out <laughs> all right bad stuff <laughs> <laughs> all right so my name is Alex green i am the wyoming apologist um i am a lifelong member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints um do you have a I youtube grew channel? Up... what was that? that that's your youtube channel the wyoming apologist Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to interject once in a while. You'll just have to get used to that. So, of course, he's got a YouTube channel, and he's been a lifelong member. So that means he's a cradle to grave Latter Day Saint, and you better believe it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so I was I was raised in the church. Um, my uh, my testimony, you know, growing up, I, I usually relied on my parents up until the age of uh, 16 was when I gained my testimony for myself of the truth of the gospel. Um, a lot of stuff happened in 2016. So um, a few things that happened. I, um, I got to volunteer for a few days on a church farm one hour south of here in Colorado. Um, I also got to, I also got to see the dedication of, um, a new temple in closer to my home. Uh, the closest temple at that time before that was the Denver, Colorado temple, which was, it was two hours away on a good day, three hours on, uh, um, usually though, cause we'd have to go through the Denver traffic to get to the temple. And um, they built a temple 70 miles closer to my home in Fort Collins, Colorado. So um, a few things that I was able to participate in for that temple was um, since my grandfather was on the um, he was on the temple committee with a bunch of other people from around the uh, temple district, we were able to go. Um, and see the temple before the open house started. And that was just something that was really cool. I got to be one of the first people to go through the finished temple. Were you there um, during the construction too sometimes? I was, yeah. So we would, uh, when they announced where it was going to be built, uh, we went and visited just before the groundbreaking. And um, it was just a big empty field um, south of Fort Collins. Um, they've built all around the temple now. There's a big neighborhood now. <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, there, back in the day, it was just a big empty field. And then we went a few times. Anytime we were going through the Fort Collins area, we would we would drive over and we would just go and see the um, go and see the temple. Um, just watch the progress as it happened, and then. Um, yeah, and then after that, they, um, the temple was finished and, uh, I was able to go before the open house to see the temple. 
And then another thing that I was able to participate in in 2016 was the cultural celebration for the for the temple, which if you don't know what a cultural celebration is, um, it's where it's something that the young men and young women do um, in the temple district. They put on a show for um, whoever it is that's coming to dedicate the temple. For us, it was President Uchtdorf and Elder Renland both came. Cool. So, so I had a question before we get too far into that. Uh, it, I imagine that, I mean, I live in Madeira, California, small community, 60,000 people. Fresno's got 500,000 people. And uh, I would imagine that uh, that Madeira probably has more population than Wyoming. What's the population in <laughs> Wyoming as a as a whole? Um, about six hundred thousand people. So, so you guys get a temple, and you probably have. A, is it uh, a predominantly uh, Latter Day Saint uh, state, or is it? Um, uh, or are you guys the the real minority, and we're talking about maybe one percent of. Uh, out of the population's latter day saint. So technically the la um the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints is the largest religion in the state of Wyoming. Okay. Um but it's only like one in nine people um that are actually Latter day Saints. Oh, okay. So, so about eleven yeah. percent of the uh state is Latter day Saint. Mm hmm Oh that's cool. So that's a it's a healthy number. I mean, uh, so uh, out of 600,000 people, you said, but it's still it's about 70,000 people yeah. that are Latter day Saints. Yeah. So wow, that's cool. So you guys, you guys got a temple in, in such a small population. Yeah. That's, so, that's really well, cool. my closest temple is in Colorado. Yeah. But I mean, they do have another one um, on the west side of the state where most of the members of the church live. Oh, so you have yeah. two temples in Wyoming? Um, three actually. We have three, three. now. Three so, temples in Wyoming. Yep. So we've got one that's in operation in Star Valley, Wyoming. Right. We've got one currently under construction in um, Casper, Wyoming, and we've got another one that's got a groundbreaking announced in Cody, Wyoming. Okay, that's cool. Yep. Don't want, have one in my city yet. Don't have one in Cheyenne. Okay. But because you they, know, we can, we always they, we can pray. <laughs> yeah, fine. We'll interrupt once in a while. Uh, I was just saying that we have one in Fresno, and then 120 miles south of that, they're going to build a new temple in Bakersfield, California, where I'm originally from. So, oh, I was me and my boy. I told him about it. He says, Dad, your family lives there. <laughs> if you do. And I think I've described a little bit of my family where we have some very uh, colorful characters. So anyway, uh, we'll get into my story sometime in the near future and you can hear all about the thugs and the saints. So but anyway, go ahead, please. Sorry about that. No, it's all right. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, so we were doing, we did the cultural celebration in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado for the temple. We did it at Hughes Stadium, which is, um, it's the football stadium at Colorado State University. Um, and that, I mean, I think that all the practice and everything was worth it because we practiced, um, you know, what we were going to be doing. We learned the, the music, we learned the um, the choreography for it um that was i think that started in august and we went all the way it might have started in july actually but anyways it was several months that we were doing the choreography and we um yeah so we learned and they wrote a song as well that we all sang um for it and anyways so we um we did all of that for several months leading up to the event um, at the beginning of the event as well, um, after President Uchtdorf and Elder Renlund came out, 
and sat down. We um we had a hymn and an opening prayer before we started, and um the hymn that we sang was High on the Mountain Top. And um, you know, something that that was just that was such a crazy experience because it was an entire stadium of people and like the stadium was completely packed as well. Like we had, it was, it was completely packed. So when we sang, I'm sure that everybody in Fort Collins could hear us singing and, you know, it was just, the spirit was so strong there and like um, just the, just the power and the enthusiasm that was behind the song when we were singing it was just, just immense. So it sounds like all of Wyoming showed up that were Latter-day Saints and probably a few uh, non-members too. Probably, there yeah. non-members there at that uh, stadium uh, checking that out or is it mostly um, Latter-day Saints? I'm not sure. I'm sure there were a few people that got invited, but yeah. it was mostly just like the parents and the grandparents and I mean, we had enough seats that they told us that as many people as we wanted to, you know, to come and see that they could come and see. Oh, wow. So, because Hughes Stadium is huge. If you've ever been to uh, Colorado State University, it's a big college. It's a big stadium. Do you know the uh, the capacity of that stadium? The capacity? Yeah. I think it's, it's almost like 10,000 people, I think. Oh, okay. So it's so, okay. I was thinking, my mind when you said it was packed, Colorado Stadium or whatever. It's yeah, I was thinking like the fifties and sixties. So you're talking about not the huge stadiums like you know, on national TV and stuff like that. Oh, about no, it's it wasn't as big as um definitely not as big as like Mile High or um the one at University of Colorado in Boulder. But right, right, okay, okay. Now we get. That's okay. So, but 10,000 people is 10,000 people. That's a lot of people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we had, um, yeah, the stadium was just packed. And, um, anyways, and then, um, the next day, you know, I was able to attend the dedication of the temple afterwards and, um, and the cornerstone ceremony. And that was, that was wonderful to see too. Um, you know, we had it broadcast to our, our meeting house in Cheyenne. So we didn't have to drive down to watch it. And, you know, that was just absolutely wonderful. Just being able to watch that and, um, you know, participate in the dedication. And then, after that, then the next week, they dedicated the first temple in Wyoming. After they dedicated the temple in Fort Collins, that's, you know, close to where I am. I live in Cheyenne. So. Cheyenne, yeah, so, Wyoming, is that right? Cheyenne, Wyoming, yep. Okay. And how close is that to the border of, of Colorado? Um, It's like 20 miles. Oh, okay. It's not too bad, too far up the border. Oh, okay, no. cool. Now, we go to Colorado all the time. Oh, that's cool. Um, now, we tried this interview last night, and unfortunately, um, his intercept in internet uh, was kind of shaky, so we're doing it again. So, But I learned a little bit about uh, uh, Alex through a couple of interviews we did yesterday. Uh, you said that you had... Uh, Gained a testimony at around the age of 16. Is that right? That's correct. And one of those experiences that you had to kind of put you, like, set your feet in solid ground was uh, at that stadium. Is that right? That was one of them. Yep. Can you kind of describe it as uh, if uh, to a point where you're feeling comfortable? Yeah, so um, so there was that one, and then there was the dedication of the Star Valley Wyoming Temple. I also had a personal experience at that one. But, you know, at the stadium, you know, I just, um, just the strength of the spirit that was there that night was, um, it's indescribable, honestly. Just, it was, it was like, it was like fire, you know, it was like a fire in my soul, and 
um, I just felt just power, you know, like the power of God, um, just radiating throughout everything. So how, I guess. How, how do you answer the question of, of a feeling, um, and tied to your testimony? I mean, that, that probably, that question probably came up a few times, didn't it? On your mission? It, it did. Yes. And I guess just, you know, the feeling, I guess, is just the power of the spirit. You know, there's not really any other way to put it. It's just like you just know it when you feel it, just the burning in the bosom yeah. kind of feeling. I mean, I've had I've had those, too. And I'm not I'm not trying to say anything uh, nefarious about your experience. I think good is good. You know what I mean? If I'm listening to a pastor from a different uh, religion and he says something that touches my soul it's still it's still truth and uh -huh. it will bring about the spirit of uh, uh and the spirit will reveal us to us truth through through that uh uh just say uh, i he it's almost like the, it abides within us in a deeper way it's like blowing it's like glowing kind of experience and it's like wow so yeah, I could. So it's not. Um, you can have that feeling at any given time. Is that right? I mean, it's, but when you have it tied to a particular religion, then it, then it ties you to that uh, uh, saying. Okay, because you know, uh, the the story of Joseph Smith and all those things that come about, them are very hard things to accept for a lot of people. And then you have, um, uh, and you have this experience. And it's like, wait a minute, if this was evil, this was all bad, then the spirit would be telling me to get out of here. But yet he's beckoning me to stay and enjoy the moment. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's important to know because. Again, it, it, it because we don't. I think uh, uh, for the most part, I don't think people are trying to uh, who are looking for uh, uh, an avenue back to God, and they're and they're doing it sincerely. I don't see how they uh, uh, and it's not for themselves; it's for the fact that it's for their God. You know that somebody in that situation that's seeking and praying and honestly looking for that avenue back that he would um that anybody would if god said this was wrong he's going to tell you to get out and i would agree with this point too sometimes people are in the wrong place too many people that are in the, the church they're miserable and i don't think god wants us to be miserable and if, we, and if the only way that you can be happy and to and to and to uh fulfill uh, have a more fulfilling life that will be uh, a positive impact on others he might invite you out the door not because he's you know thinks less of you or anything like that but he doesn't want you to be miserable he wants you to be happy you know so for That's us right. invite this in and and that's a good thing for us, you know, and that's why I don't proselyte to people because I know God has a plan for all of us. And there's, you know, and the idea that we are the elect. Well, if in order to be an elect people, well, there's probably not going to be a very few, very many of us in reality, because that's why he would call it the elect, because if everybody's a member of the church, guess what? Then nobody's an elect. It's like giving trophies out for for uh, for just because it's because you exist and God doesn't put give us trophies just because He exists. We exist. He does it because of our uh, what uh, uh, because of our uh, journey that we're on. And He says, "You have done well, thou faithful servant. You know, good and faithful servant." you know, kind of attitude. Anyway, go ahead, please. I'm sorry to 
uh, be so long in my interjection. No, it's all right. <laughs> so um, I guess after that, you know, after I had all those experiences in uh, 2016, you know, that was basically it. Like my my testimony was solid. Um, fast forward a few years later, I've graduated high school and um, I decided I would go off to um, trade school to. Um, and you said this is through a union. It was. Yeah, it was, see, uh, for me, the union is the devil. <laughs> well, they, um, they gave us the option to and... join or not to join yeah. afterwards, and I decided yeah. not to join. But they paid for everything That's while cool. I was there, so That's good. So, yep, it was so a trade school for what? It was a trade school. Um, they had several trades, so painting was one of them. They also had masonry, carpentry, electrical, culinary, um, welding, um handyman basically jack of all trades uh they also had a forestry program with the u.s forest service so okay i got a question uh uh now my dad was a mechanic i'm a mechanic my you know i have a generation of people that were in the mechanical field my grandfather was a mechanic what was your uh uh parents uh um what did they, where did they uh, work? Were they teachers or? So my father was in the National Guard. Right. And my mom. Um, what was his duty in the National Guard? He did artillery. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. right. He so shot yeah. the big guns. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So that was, that was what he did in the National Guard. And then my mom, um, She's still she's had a job for a long time as an accountant for Papa John's. OK, so that's cool. Now, when your dad got out of the military, he didn't stay with blowing things up. I imagine he went to another uh, career, didn't he? No. Yeah, he. Um, so, yeah, he's retired from the National Guard now. Oh, cool. And um, yeah, he did two tours in um, Asia and the Middle East. Right. So, oh. yep. So he, um, yeah, after the second tour, he retired a few months after that because he was just kind of done. Yeah, I can understand. So was he, uh, what, does he, uh, does he work now or is he uh, just uh, retired? Yeah, he does. Um, he's a, right now he's a, um, I'm trying to remember what, what exactly he does. That's why you're I guess basically on. he works, <laughs> he still kind of works he's still associated with the national guard all he does is just make sure that everybody gets paid now oh okay so okay. Uh, so he's still working through the military is that what you're saying through the government yeah but he doesn't have to worry about you know passing the physicals anymore and he doesn't have to wear the uniform or go to drill right, or anything right, right, like right. That. So, so um and i and we had uh when i was in the military we had uh civilian workers too that they they were government, uh, uh, well, basically the gov they were government work government workers, and that's it. So yeah, I understand yeah. what you're uh, what you're describing there. So, yeah, so that's that's, cool. that's what he does now All is right. just that, and then my mom still works for Papa John's. So oh, cool. So and you and you, when you went to that vocational school, you started to uh, uh, get into the painting career field. Is that right? I, I did. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Was that something yeah, you jo enjoyed? I did, yes. And, um, need, you know, I, I kind of didn't painting, like, man. the only thing I didn't like was just that it was a seasonal job. Yeah. So I didn't have anything to do in the wintertime, hardly. So that's kind of why I kind of shifted career paths after my mission. It was because of that. Okay. But, um... But yeah, so like while I was there, you know, I was introduced to anti-Mormonism for the very first time. Um, everybody called me that crazy Mormon while I was on the center. That became kind of a nickname um, that everybody had. A lot of people had for me. But uh, one day, you know, someone came up to me and, and, he, and this is why you this is why kind of compelled you to or one of the backstories you have. That's why you got into apologetics 
and call yourself the Wyoming apologist. Is that right? Yes. This because is yeah, one of the cat kind of the catalyst know. of 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 things today. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Okay, cool, cool. Yep. So he comes up to me and he starts telling me all these things that he thinks that the church believes. I'm completely confused. I'm like, um, who told you this? And he told me, oh, I was in this film called The God Makers that said that, you know, Mormons believe. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, at that point, I had never heard of that film. I had never seen it, you know. So he had me sit through it. That was probably the worst 90 minutes just of my life um because mostly just because it's bad acting and i can't get those 90 minutes back of just blatant dishonesty and half truths about the church wow you know like so i mean after he was done i literally looked at him like you do realize those are all actors right <laughs> <laughs> that was my first response after the film was over That's funny. Uh, was you do realize these are actors because like they're not even looking at the camera they're like looking off screen and you can see them like reading like a, a script? script off the screen <laughs> yes you could actually see them doing that oh wow in this film so like i don't understand why people even think this is you know these are real people it's like these people are reading a script that's just off screen and they're going, oh, man, I'm just so traumatized about the church. And they just were so bad to me. And it's like, okay. That's crazy. You yeah. know, and then that was kind of my I've introduction. It. I've never watched The Godmakers. I, I never really had any interest in it. I don't know why. Because I, I'll watch. I, I have plenty of um, anti-Mormon stuff that I can engage in and and uh, so I fill my plate up with uh, all these things, so I don't have to go looking for the Godmakers. Especially the way you describe it is just bad filmography completely. No, bad. I bet you that you cartoon. Know. I bet you that cartoon that they put out about our about our church is even better than that, isn't it? The one. That's, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure they the, actually show that cartoon in the Godmakers. Oh, is that right? Yeah, that was a segment, <laughs> and that was probably oh the best God. part of it. If there was any good part of it, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the only good thing that came out of it was the the Hammer Time remix. <laughs> oh, is that right? <laughs> Have you seen that? No. Oh gosh, I gotta show you. It's called uh, "Can't Stop Mormon Jesus." <laughs> oh, is that Can't, or right? "Can't Touch Mormon Jesus"? That's what it's called. "Can't Touch Mormon Jesus," <laughs> and like. It plays, it like remixes like the words from oh, wow. the, We're gonna, from here the it cartoon everything. in it and like to like Hammer Time. I have to check that out. I'll send it to you. It's funny. Oh, wow. It's really That's funny. Crazy. I bet. Well, I've checked that out. Um, so, so now that you, uh, and I, and I, and I worked in construction for a long time and, uh, I know the kind of, uh, uh, harassment you can get and uh uh and not, uh, and you're going to a trade school and it's construction workers and stuff like that and of course their um their tongue and uh their thoughts are not the uh, uh most correct they're good people most of the time but they they have their their vices uh, so were you influenced at all or try did they try to peddle uh the uh, the world on you at all um, I mean, after the God Makers, nobody really tried to push anything on me. Before that, they did. They tried to tell me like all these different things that they had heard about the church, or you know, just whatever. And after the God Makers, I just you know they realized that there was no convincing me otherwise, so they kind of backed off after that. Um, did they offer you a cigarette, a drink, of their of their life all or anything the time. like that? <laughs> all the time yeah like they would always try to get me to come out and have a cigarette with them or come party on the weekends and just get wasted and it's like no <laughs> no well I, I mean you know and i think i stayed away from all that stuff when i uh well even when at, at your age i kind of stay, i was into pornography that was my hang up uh it's not a good hang up don't don't i don't trivialize any any of that and uh 
but uh, you know, it's it, for those who can get through adolescence and get through uh, to the moment they go on their mission and, and keep themselves in the straight and narrow. It's a, it's a, like an achievement, unlike any other achievement because so many of us have fallen uh, to, to the world. And uh, for those who uh, don't, it's, yeah, I, uh, tremendous. And I think we don't, uh, I don't, I don't think we celebrate that enough because so many people, we can't celebrate it because so many people are having such a hard time that when you celebrate somebody's uh, um, uh, 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 incredible uh, 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 choices of lifestyle, and you celebrate that, then everybody that's been in that world of uh, sinfulness that uh, that requires more than just uh, on your knees, then they feel ashamed. They feel like they're uh, beaten down less. Me, I I had to go to the bishop many a times for my ills in life. So, uh, and I would I would celebrate those who uh, can make it to a point in their life that they didn't have to suffer the sins of the world in order to figure out why we don't sin in the world why we don't choose those uh, uh, unrighteous acts. And uh, like I said, but like I said, so many are uh, too sensitive to that, to that position to say, well, I, how can I feel like I'd be a part of this place when everybody else in here is doing so well? And I'll tell you right now, we're all failing miserably in one way or the other. So, but and I imagine, has there ever been a point in your life where you said, I failed, meaning spiritually or anything like that to this um, point? I don't think so, no. Yeah, you. so you've just been, I, I describe it this way. There's, a, there's two paths to get to where we want to go, all right? The one is a nice, steady, upworld uphill climb that you just keep going and just keep going it's as boring nobody's on the path that you might see one or two stragglers that are there on that path and they just motoring along just fine but nothing you know in their life is unique it's it's plain it looks like they can see the see what is ahead of them and the glory that is there they can feel it, they can touch it, but they're not there yet. And then you have those people, like myself, that see this party going on down in this nice, easy path going down into this valley. And they can't see past the fog, but they can see the people, all the people on the path. And there's thousands of them. And everybody down at the bottom of the hill that they can see or the bottom of this valley that they can see is all having a good time, partying, looking like they're having lots of fun. And so you get on this path and you get down there and all of a sudden you uh, find out that the deeper you get into that world that's down there, it becomes more chaotic. It becomes more anarchist. It becomes vile and, 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 uh, and 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 uh, and hateful and resentful and 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 and, and the fighting and, and bickering that goes on down there, it becomes a place where you don't want don't want to be if you if you're somebody of a good nature. And so the only way to get out of this place, because the road is loaded up, you can't go backwards. You're done. That way is not. You're not getting out that way. The only way to get out is up this cliff where you got to climb. And there's few people on that same cliff that you're climbing. And there'll be those who help you from behind and those who will reach out and help you come up. And you'll be doing the same thing for others. But it's a hard climb. And you don't want to go that way. 
you'll end up to the same place that those took the nice, easy uphill path. You'll both end up the same place, but that that climbing that cliff is very hard, and I've experienced that myself. And uh, so, so you're doing well. I mean, you, you, and if you can continue to endure to the end, endure well always, then that's a tremendous, tremendous accomplishment on your own part. So don't think that you're doing something less than those who have struggled. I think there's a couple of, of things in the Book of Mormon that we read about where, yes, if you've sinned, then you will appreciate the atonement in a greater capacity than those who have not sinned. But it'd be better that you didn't sin and receive the atonement than it is for you to sin and have to uh, uh, partake of the atonement. Do you, you understand what I'm saying there? Yeah. Yeah, and I think, like I said, celebrate it. So celebrate your life in that way that you haven't had to, because I had to learn the hard way. So anyway, so continue on with your story. Sorry. Like I said, I'm going to interject, but you're going to have to survive, <laughs> survive my of course. Of experience. Yeah. So anyways, I graduated from trade school. After that, I went on my mission. I served in the Texas Dallas East mission. Um, wow. I'm going to tell this story again. Uh, I told it to him last night, but I want to make sure we get it in. I got a son that's not gone on his mission yet. Out of eight kids, I've only got one that's left in the church. But he's good. He's he's going to church. He's uh, 19 years old. He works at the same place I work. And I at, uh, and uh, he said, I want to go to Spain for my mission. I said, you're going to end up in the Spanish wards and the Bible Belt is where you're going. <laughs> and then I said, you know, if you don't give me careful and you don't go on your mission soon enough, God's just going to, his name is Jonah. God's just going to bring, uh, raise you up in his little spaceship and drop you in Harlem is what he's going to do until you have to spend two years there. <laughs> like, like, uh, like Jonah had to, uh, was gobbled up by the fish and, uh, put in Nineveh. So be careful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is funny, but, uh, it, w it would have been better if we, if our video worked last night, because he had a better reaction than he than hearing it. Uh, me chew my cabbage twice <laughs> <laughs> so anyway go ahead i'm sorry sorry alex for um yeah so i went on my mission i served uh, the two-year mission um and then you know during my mission you know i just there was just i just noticed there was a lot of negativity about the church and about just a lot of falsehoods and a lot of rumors that just weren't true about the church what what was one of the uh, more demanding um, moments in your life on your mission that you had to, it, 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 you already knew it in here that it was true and you, that wasn't going to uh, be taken away. But I, if you're anything like uh, any uh, normal human being, there was always, there's always that moment that, that, Somebody will say something and you're like, oh, did you have any of those moments? Too many um, of them <laughs> to count? Well, I mean, of course, I did have a few companions I didn't like much, but um, I, I think that doctrinally kind of... or historically about the church or anything like that. Um, no, not really. Nothing really deterred me too much. Oh, wow. You know, like the main thing was just that there were times that I just couldn't answer questions. And that always bugged me. Because, you know, we'd have to come back like the ne next week or we'd have to do like extra studying to like figure out answers to questions for people. But, um, you know, the thing is, is the people that always ask those kind of questions I don't think they really ever had it in their hearts to join anyway, right. because they'd never get baptized. They'd end up dropping us at some point, no matter what. Well, one so. of the things that I've noticed about myself, I don't, I don't answer questions to try to convert. I, I only answer them because it, I have a drive of just being able to, being able to answer the question. I'm never satisfied unless I can answer the question. It's helped me gain a lot of understanding about the gospel because of that. So uh, 
did, was it hard not uh, did did you enjoy the idea of being able to answer the question later on saying, you know what? I, I got it now. You learn something, you you experience this like enlightenment from the spirit and from the scripture saying, that's the, that's it. And no matter what this person or people did uh, with that, with the answer you gave, you were satisfied. Is that right? Yes. And don't let me feed you words, buddy. <laughs> you do it spontaneously on your own. Or they'll say, yeah, well, right. the old man just, uh, just, uh, Throwing them the easy softballs, but uh, or whatever that uh, uh, metaphor would be, that would fit this the occasion. But you, it was that you enjoyed answering the question. Was that right? Oh yes, definitely. And being satisfied that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like even if they weren't satisfied with the answer, you know, I was always satisfied with the answer I would find. Okay. You know, because the church, you know, the church has so many amazing resources. And I just, you know, it's, it's great, you know, being able to have the scriptures have like all these um, general conference talks, enzyme articles from church magazines. So. Very good. Very good. Yep. And, I mean, the, the church has a world of resources now with the internet and all that. I mean, you can't, you can't stop from finding good answers, uh, fair Mormon and, and, and places like that. I got a question exactly. for you. Um, is there anything that a young man or woman can do to really prepare themselves for a mission? Or is it one of the things like, are, it's almost like uh, it just came to me, the thought. In the pre-existence, we were said, okay, this is what it looks like. You want to go? <laughs> really want to go? It's hard. Yeah. It's real hard. Believe me. And God and, and our father is saying, it's really, really hard. Do you really want to go? Yes, the reward is undeniably the best thing you'll ever have. But the 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 heartache and everything, the pain and suffering you'll experience and and all that. Do you really want um, to go? And I think yeah. the mission, you know, and as a spirit, we're like. Yeah, we're good, man. We get through this like nothing. No, not a. And is there kind of a this lackadaisical attitude sometimes, or we get into that as young people coming in to a mission? Did you have any of that, or were you scared out of your mind and prepared all you could? <laughs> the God so, um, yeah. so in my opinion, the two things that you can do to really prepare for your mission. Um, I'd say study the scriptures, especially the Book of Mormon and the New Testament, because those are the two that you are going to use the most um, while you're a missionary. And then another thing I would say to do is to, um, you know, exercise, make sure that you are, you know, physically prepared to be able to go to bike or walk several miles every day because. And the conversations are exhausting, too. If you're not exactly. if you don't have the stamina, just to having the conversations and that mental breakdown. Did you ever play any sports? Um, I did not. I was in marching band though. So oh, well, uh, let's go with marching band. If you were tired or fatigued and you didn't have enough, uh, it and you were uh, doing anything out there mentally, you start breaking down. Oh yeah. It, and on a mission, if you're not in shape, mentally, your physical, the you know, your physical stamina will affect your thinking over uh, a, a two or three hour time. So uh, uh, even if you're just sitting there and, and talking to somebody, it's physically demanding because your brain is working and it's working very hard. And you're trying to do mental gymnastics sometimes, and that tires you up. So physically, you have to be fit, and that's what you're talking about. Is that right, Alex? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah so, cause um, cause that's also the thing is like with um, you know, with marching band, you know, you have to have 
in the summertime we would do um we would do parades all over um wyoming and um so we'd go to laramie jubilee days we would do cheyenne frontier days and we would do cody stampede up in cody so we had like three that we would go to um did we do anything in Casper? I don't think we did anything in Casper. We might have done it one year. But anyways, those are like the three main ones. And, you know, each of those parades were um, about three miles. So, you know, we'd have to have – I played the saxophone. So I had to have enough, you know, stamina to be able to, you know, stand up, you know, perfectly straight with everybody else and to be able to walk in time with everybody else. And then also carry my instrument the full three miles. There's a lot of there, people don't appreciate uh, how much work it takes to 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 perform uh, uh, as a uh, somebody in a band, uh, especially those people that carry the tubas, man. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I don't envy them. <laughs> oh no, saxophones belt my limit too. I think I played the trumpet and grammar or in grade school and uh and uh played the drums i still play yeah. the drums now i picked up a set or my family got me a set like 15 years ago 20 years ago and i still play i love drums it's my favorite Is oh that, yeah drums you have a favorite instrument that you uh enjoy listening to besides playing <laughs> um i really like um i like electric guitars <laughs> yeah, that's cool See, I, I, I love uh, uh, music from India, and it's almost like a one-string rhythmic sound, and I love that sound. It's still a string instrument. I think it's the uh, string instruments are the closest thing to the vocal cord when you're – how it uh, vibrates and how our vocal cord vibrates in the same manner. So it's very – very uh very similar and anyway so so again on your mission uh you uh you met a few people is that right i did yes i met some many people, people that we would know off of facebook and uh and some and and that's and uh and uh so how do you how do you uh did they live in the area or did they just were they on their missions or what have, um so most of the them... names that you said last night. Yeah. So, um, so I got, you know, I was on, we were really pushing doing, you know, online finding people like on Facebook. That was something they really started pushing in our mission. Um, and I guess they were pushing it all over the U S and Canada at the time because they were finding success with it during the, you know, the coronavirus where you can't just be walking around on the streets and going to people's houses. Okay. And anyways, um, so I joined um the Facebook group called the Calvary. It's a missionary group on Facebook. And you know, that was kind of my introduction to um to like apologetics, you know, real apologetics was that. And, you know, I just I was just very intrigued by it and by the um just everything that went into it. And, you know, through that, I was able to, uh, well, I learned about Paul Gee and um, who else was there? Um, you know, also, I was learning about other people. And, you know, I found that there's just so much hate, you know, for the gospel online on Facebook and other places. And so that's when I really started getting into it, it was kind of towards the end of my mission. And uh, that was just something I really enjoyed doing was being able to um, being able to do the uh, apologetics for for everything. And I just I just I really got into it while I was serving my mission. And then I came home from my mission. Um, and after getting back into the swing of things, you know, I. I continue to do apologetics and I've continued to do it up to this point in time. And I really enjoy it. I enjoy being able to do debates. I enjoy being able to, um, being able to have discussions with people online. I enjoy being able to, 
meet new people through this and uh, learn more things about the church. Um, so very, very good. Yeah. I was just wondering, you you named uh, named a few names last night uh, that were your mentors and uh, one of them, but or you met on your mission and I'm, I'm kind of intrigued. You said Jacob Hansen was one that you uh, met on your mission. Was that through Facebook or was he actually in the area? Um, I met him through Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, we became friends through that. Right. Um, and then Did you guys correspond back and forth, uh, uh, through messenger or anything like that. Um, we have a little bit. Yeah. yeah. We okay. usually just, um, uh, we correspond through Facebook mostly. So, right, right. okay. But anyways, yeah. So Jacob Hansen is one of them. Um, another one would be Travis Anderson. Um, and you know Travis and I, we're we're really really good friends now. Yes. So, and honestly, we because like it kind of started after I got home from my mission. We would just send memes to each other through Messenger, just like to make each other laugh. And you know, but like we've become really good friends, and uh, we've we've done a lot of stuff together. So, is there any chance that Travis would like to come in and uh, talk? talk with us about any particular subject or I'm sure he would. I mean, Paul? Uh, well, him and Paul don't get along, so probably yeah. don't invite. <laughs> probably him. probably uh, somebody else we need to invite to debate with instead of Paul. With yeah. Paul. But like, I'm sure Travis would be fine coming on and doing a discussion with you and me or oh, good, uh, good. with someone else. So yeah. That'd be nice. Uh, the more the merrier. We we definitely and I've invited Alex to be uh, a regular part of this uh, program because I, he's got he's got the right attitude. Uh, he's uh, you know he's quite uh, g gifted in his tongue and the way he speaks about the gospel and he could really add to my channel and hopefully we can do some stuff on his channel to uh, bring you know, bring some. Uh, uh, people that'll follow him and not this old man, you know, <laughs> it's hard to follow an old man sometimes, but I, I, I have to laugh at sometimes that uh, no matter how good your content is or who's speaking or the notoriety they get, they don't really get a lot of hits sometimes. And I'm, I'm right there with them. And so is uh, my friend Alex and well, we need to get the word out. We need to really. Uh, so even if you, don't uh, you know see eye to eye to our uh, what we are saying or you know maybe uh but have a comment or share this video or like this video do something to uh promote the uh the church of jesus christ Latter-day saints let people know that there's better things out there than just and just what uh people want to uh form in their own minds is a uh, critical of the church and but anyway, I wanted to get back to uh, so so Jacob Hansen and Travis Anderson, and there was one other guy that we're going to invite on with Paul G next week uh, with uh, okay. on my uh, other channel. Is that right? Um, I don't know if we're going to invite him next week, but uh, yeah, Robert Boylan. You know, Robert he's Boylan. yep, he's okay. the Scriptural Mormonism podcast is what he has. And he was like a big Catholic scholar before he joined the church. Right. So he knows a lot about Catholic theology. He's kind of my go-to guy for anything related to Catholicism generally. Okay. Um, and uh, he's wrote, written several books as well on Catholic theology and LDS theology and comparing the two. And, um, you know, all of his stuff is really good. He's got a lot of credentials, so... Well, hopefully, hopefully we can get him on uh, soon. He sounds like a a person that we could uh, really uh, have have a, a, a more broadened uh, understanding of the connections between the different and how well the dead connection between early day theology and and what how it uh, uh, how it uh, links us to our modern day understanding of the scriptures you know and i think he'd be a, a great uh interview to say the least but like i said i think he'd 
you know, wipe the floor with most people on the uh, on the debate stage too. If he gets. Into- oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, he so- he wants to debate. Uh, he wants to debate Paul on uh, Sola Scriptura because those are the two that Paul didn't show up to. So. Well, and I think that's a good that's a good place. Uh, if he wants to, you know, whatever that looks like. Um, so let's get back to you. And uh, whenever, um, so you're you're on your mission through Facebook. You you seen some apologist, uh, Robert Boylan, uh, uh, Travis, Travis Anderson, and Jacob Hansen. Uh, they all got YouTube channel or, or Jacob Hansen has thoughtful saints, thoughtful faith, thoughtful faith, and th- uh, for his Facebook and thoughtful saints for his uh, uh, YouTube channel. And Robert Boylan has what's the channel? The Scriptural podcast? Mormonism. Scriptural Mormonism. And Travis Anderson, just part of the uh, group on Facebook. Is that right? Yeah. That's cool. So and and so that's uh that's where you can find these people and they're and they're they're very good at what they do. Um uh, was there um anybody outside of that group uh that like my mentors are like a Hugh Nibley, Daniel Peterson, Joseph Smith, Jesus Christ, you know <laughs> <laughs> some antagonists. Um, I mean those are like the main ones that got me into apologetics are those ones. Okay. So, but do you have any mentors outside of Facebook that you've enjoyed? Uh, have you studied any of the uh, Hugh Nibley stuff or anything like that? Um, Let's see. James Probably E. Not. Talmadge, He's, I guess, would be one yeah. from outside of Facebook. Yeah. You know, because he wrote Jesus the Christ, and then right. he also wrote um, several other books. Um, his book on the Great Apostasy is absolutely wonderful. Oh wow! And um, his book on the um, the Articles of Faith is also really good. My one a uh, number one of mine too is uh, the Grand Richards. The uh, and he was he wrote the uh, marvelous work in a wonder book, and I think that was a staple for. Uh, uh missionaries and i don't know is it still a staple for the missionaries or it's not probably not no used to be used to be used to be a big staple in the uh uh in the missionary uh before they where he went out or that was one of the books you had because he explained a lot of things that uh that could help a person so it's an old book still find it somewhere uh it's marvelous work and wonder by la grand richards but He's got a lot of, you can go to BYU Classics um, uh, uh, and you can find LeGrand Richards all over the place on, uh, he's got several talks on there. He was an apostle uh, uh, up to about 1984, 85 before he passed away. So I really enjoy him. Uh, so anyway, yeah. so, so now you're uh now you're uh one of the things I wanted to ask you about. You said uh, before, and I no, no, it's hard to rehash some stuff and not uh, and do it in the same manner. But I want we're going to attempt it. You said there was a particular uh, family that you uh, were uh, having discussions with. It was a part fit member family. The wife had joined earlier. Is that right? And that then, is right, yeah. Yeah, could you tell me that story again? Tell the audience our story again? Or that yes, story? of course. So, no, no, sorry, but you're so yeah, so the wife had joined, I think it was a transfer, maybe two transfers before I got there. And the husband, he was struggling with um, just joining the church. Um, we went and we, we taught him about tithing one, you know, one week and you know, something that he said to us was just, uh, he told us, he said, elders, I don't think I can join the church. And we told, we asked him, why not? And he's like, look, I agree with all the doctrine. I agree with everything that you've taught me, but I won't be able to pay tithing. And we asked him, you know, we were like, what's going on? What, why can't you pay tithing? And he told us, he said, 
you know, I've got, he's like, I never have any money. You know, I have barely enough money um, with the jobs that I work and, you know, my wife works that, you know, we have enough money for food for our kids. And this is, and this is rent. during COVID. Is that right? Um, this was post COVID at this point, post -COVID, but still you, it's in Texas and, it's and in Texas. Texas. Things are just getting started again, really, in a lot of big ways. Oh, yeah. yeah his, so he is financially strapped, is what he's saying. Is that right? Yeah, and he had lots of um, debts he had to pay off. So he told us, he said, yeah, like, I by the end of the month, I have zero dollars in my bank account after um, I get my paycheck because um, everything I have left just goes to paying off my credit card debt. Wow. And... So anyway, so we told him, we said, you know, if you promise that you're going to, you know, we want you to pray. We want you to um, just think about these things that we've been teaching you. We want you, we really want you to, you know, join the church with us and um, everything. So anyway, so he told us that he would pray and um, we told him that we'd come back next week. Uh, we honestly left kind of discouraged because we didn't really have an answer for him at the moment. And so we, we prayed for him literally every day that for the rest of that week. And anyways, so after we, um, after one week later, we come back and we go, we come in and he, we sit down and uh, we're about to talk with him. And he stops us. He says, elders, before you say anything else, I need to tell you something. And we were like, OK, just like we were kind of preparing for the worst. We thought he was going to tell us that he didn't want to meet with us anymore since he wasn't going to join the church. Uh, we thought that was what he was going to tell us. And anyways, what he told us was he said, and he's like, a few days ago, I was out on my porch. I was crying and I was praying. And he's like, I basically asked you know, heavenly father to help me because he's like, I wanted, I want to join the church, but, and I want to be able to get all the blessings, but I wouldn't be able to, if I won't pay tithing. So anyways, he said he was praying, just asking for like, just something to show him that this is what he needed to do. And, you know, to help him to show him that he could get help to, um, pay tithing and as he was praying you know he got a call from a friend of his that was selling like a big piece of property north of the dallas metro and for like commercial real estate i mean commercial development and he told him that he would give him ten thousand dollars to um, help pay off his credit card debt no strings attached and um because he knew that he was having trouble with um, with the debt he had acquired. So that's what he did was he, um, yeah, he, he got the money. He told us, he said, so I think that God's trying to tell me something. I need to be baptized. <laughs> I need to join this church. Yeah. That's, that's a crazy story. And, I, I'm, you know, it's kind of uh, like this guy, and I'm sure this guy is not, uh, outside of the loop of all the anti-Mormon rhetoric out there. So he knew, I'm sure he knew some stuff that, you know, that could have bothered anybody. But this guy's like, I want to join the church and I'm hurting because I can't, because I'm just financially strapped. And I want, when I make my promises to God, I want to keep them. Kind of attitude. Was, was he a, uh, did he know any of the uh, anti stuff? Um, I mean, his uh, wife's family, when his wife joined the church, was really not nice to her about it. Okay. And he was like the first person to kind of step up and tell them, uh, kind of stand up for her and for the church wow. and everything when they were really just going in on her. Yeah, it's, that's that that like I said, there's uh, so he knew. Oh yeah. yeah, he's he's willing to to sacrifice all that he had 
uh, and like I said, it was it, what a wonderful story. And uh, you keep in contact with him still, or is there? Every uh, once in a while, I still text him. Okay, still faithful member to the church. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Now on, um, uh, you you got out of uh, off your mission, and now you're doing videos going online with Facebook and things like that and 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 enjoying the 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 back and forth um but that's not going to pay the bills unless you get a, a few followers and stuff like that on your yeah page. exactly you know what I mean so but we don't want to we don't want to uh, what priestcraft either um what's your uh what's your uh um have you thought about a career? I know that uh, right now you're a security guard. Have you thought about a career beyond that? Um, or is yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of staying in like the security, um, security field because I really enjoy it. Well, oh, good, good. Um, and it's just something that I really just like going to all the time. You know, I where I work, I it's like a five minute drive from my house, nice, so nice. that's really nice. Um. And, you know, plans for the future as well. Um, you know, I'm planning on getting married in about a year. So. Cool. And I heard you got a squeeze already. That's a girlfriend. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yes, I got a wonderful girl girlfriend. Right. Yeah, oh, wonderful, she's wonderful. light in my life. So. That's, that's beautiful. And uh, what, which temple are you going to choose to? get married in you're gonna let her choose or are you going to uh choose uh, we decided fort collins okay cool it's the temple that's closest to both of us all right all right so Beautiful. yep so we're gonna get married in the fort collins temple and um yeah so that'll be just something that we do and i'm i mean she's just amazing you know she's a light in my life and you know, her whole family is amazing as well. They've um, basically already accepted me in. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Good Latter-day Saint family? Oh, yes. Um, her dad's in a stake presidency. Uh, so, Well, the position in the church doesn't really say much about a person. It's how, how they use that position in the church is the most important part. Uh, right. <laughs> so, but that's wonderful. Uh and I'm is uh man, I I'm lost for words for a moment. Um so what's what what's the uh I, I that's where I wanted to go. Uh you can't see it, but I'm gonna tell you what it is. <laughs> okay. We had discussed yesterday where there's this exodus of many of your age out of the church of that generation. But yeah. And and they're like, get me out of here. I've got, like I said, I've got children ranging from uh, my youngest is 19, the oldest is 30 something. And they all left church except for that youngest one. And he's fully in and you're fully in. And there's so many of them leaving is do you, and I'm, uh, I said this yesterday. It seems like there's no middle, nobody in the middle. It's like there's no lukewarm anymore in that age group. It's either the Quaker L kind of like uh, burns me and I'm, I love it, I can't get enough of it, or I'm out because it's just way too hard and it's way too ridiculous. And I want to mention. My friends at Midnight Mormons, Quakewell, Cardin Ellis, and Brad Whitbeck, and uh, you get a chance. And for those who are watching me, they need to get on, uh, get with them, and watch them. And there's so many good podcasts and YouTubers out there that are spreading the word. And I uh, hope uh, uh, you get a chance to watch them, especially uh, the, the Midnight Mormons. Uh, strike through Midnight Strike Through Mormons. Which are rebranding their name, so watch out for that. But again, is that something that you've noticed? I mean, even uh, 
you were in Texas, so you have a little bit of, of uh, vantage point from being in two different uh, areas. Versus, oh, definitely. What does it look like in Texas compared to Wyoming in that saying in that thought process? Leaving or staying? Um, I mean, I'd say, you know, most of those that you know, once the spirit has them, they're all the way in, you know. And uh, those that don't, they just kind of fall away eventually, you know, like there aren't, but yeah, because like, um, I do have, you know, several of my cousins have left the church as well, or just not active in the church. And then I do have one of my siblings, I have two younger siblings, one of them has, um, she doesn't really want anything to do with the church. Uh, the other one is, um, is a primary teacher, so Right. Um, right. So it is almost that you're in or out kind of situation. Oh, definitely. It's either you believe the church is true or you don't nowadays. Yeah, it's not a, no, it's not a social. There's no sitting on the fence. Yeah, it really is not. I don't think. I think you're uh, absolutely. And I, I would warn those who are uh, betting against or trying to invoke uh, hostility into those who are uh, searching for truth. You're going to lose if God needs them in his in his kingdom. If it is necessary for him to have them in his kingdom to move his work forward, and he wants it, there ain't nothing you're going to be able to say to them that's ever going to take that that fire from them. So be careful what you're what you're aiming to do, because the the more you fight against God's plan, the more he invokes his spirit upon the people so that he can preserve what is what is his on this earth that's right so any last words my friend um i guess that my thing is just um you know keep just pressing forward in faith because even if something doesn't seem to make sense in the gospel or if there's something that comes out about the church that just seems very controversial everything will work out in the end it always has and it will continue to do so very good very good and i think that's a true point that it's like the uh uh mark uh you know, what's mark hoffman or the hoffman uh papers and how a bunch of people left because you know and then you in no time they found out forgeries all over the place, you know, and uh, you just can't go with the first, you know, it's like uh, anything you see on the news, it's probably just a little moment of the actual event. And and when you react to that one moment, eventually the, the, the rest of the story comes out and makes you turn 180 degree because you were so wrong. And I think that's true with the uh, anything that would come out about the the, the church. You you got to wait; it'll all come uh, it'll all come through eventually uh, to show its uh, validity. Very good. I think I've wore Alex out. I had him on yesterday for a couple hours <laughs> last night with a debate, and uh, this morning again. Um, well, I've had fun. Well, I appreciate you coming on, and like I said, we're going to have. I want to make sure that people know that next week, ne this Sunday, this coming Sunday, we're going to have a, a debate with Paul G on the nature of God. And, uh, and, and Alex will be there and, and we're going to try to uh, invite. Uh, what's our friend's name? Robert. Robert. Robert, Robert yep. Boylan. So if you get a chance, uh, because I'm gonna start streaming these live, and, uh, and but I got but the old man's got to learn new tricks, and it's hard. So anyway, we'll see you next uh, next uh, uh, next uh, video that we produce, and you guys have a great one. And I'm the Latter Day Saint on fire. He's the Latter Day Saint on fire, and we're out of here. <laughs>